Welcome to where I find my ships and today we're going to be checking out the Storm Rider Mark III. And we're going to go on a mad deep dive. This ship is absolutely stunning. It has major rank 4 starship design components across the board. Every single major component is a starship design rank 4. Puts it in a rare category because not a great deal of the ships you can find in the system has a complete build out of rank 4 starship design. I'm also going to show you a really reliable way to get the Storm Rider Mark 1, 2 or 3. For the most part we're going to be focusing on the Mark 3 but this is also very much applicable to the Mark 1 and 2. Before we get into all the goodness, how does the Storm Rider Mark 1, 2 and 3 fit into the universe of Starfield? First off you probably know this that the Storm Rider Mark 1, 2, and 3 come under the combat category. So these are heavily weaponized ships that are there in Starfield to protect the gold bank's interest and transport all the goods and gold and money. Well, what's interesting is that the Storm Rider Mark 1 and 2 is an identical copy of the Varun Revelation Mark 1 and 2. The Storm Rider Mark 1 is the exact same ship as the Varun Revelation Mark 1, and the same goes for the Varun Revelation. Mark II is the exact same ship as the Storm Rider Mark II. But where things get drastically different is the Storm Rider Mark III. The Storm Rider Mark III is completely unique to the Gull Bank. It is their ultimate defense against piracy. The only caveat to this is that I'm pretty sure you can get a Storm Rider Mark III as a Valentine, whereas you will find the Mark I and II of the Storm Rider very, very common across the universe as the Black Variation under control of the faction of the Varun. So what makes the Storm Rider Mark III so special? Well, the Storm Rider Mark III is the seventh most valued ship in all of Starfield, coming in at over 578,000. That price will fluctuate depending on your commerce perk and what rank it is, which highlights that its combined components makes it a monster in space. Looking at the damage, the damage output is 232, but keep in mind, that the damage figures is an output. It's not a damage per second. It's not the most accurate way to really judge a ship's potential in terms of how much damage it can dish out, which will put the Storm Rider Mark III at the 25th position just from a damage output perspective, which again, doesn't really highlight the weapons and power that this ship has, but we'll come back to the weapons in a moment. And how protected are you gonna be in the Storm Rider Mark III? Well, the Mark III shield rank comes in at third position, making it a very safe place to call home in space. It's a rare ship that has 12 bar for shield, which is no surprise, because this beast has been equipped with the 104D Guardian Shield Generator, which is the most expensive shield generator in all of Starfield, which gives you that supreme feeling of being a gold bar stuck in a central bank vault, safe as can be. Well, what if you need to get away quickly or jump to a far distant system? Well, the Mark III won't disappoint. Having the most expensive grav drive in the game, the infamous J52 Gamma Grav Drive, which you'll be able to unlock and purchase to throw onto your own ship at level 53. This grav drive has the highest health and a power of 11. It comes in at a whopping 118,000 credits. So you'll be able to get out of a tight pinch at a moment's notice. And speaking of pinches, the Storm Rider Mark III is equipped with the Pinch 8Z reactor, which again is also the most expensive reactor that you can get in Starfield. Incredible, isn't it? The Pinch 8Z reactor is one of two reactors that has a base power of 40. And coming in with the highest health as well, this is an absolute monster of a reactor that's going to allow the addition of insane weapons to stack on this beast. And none other than the Supernova 2200 engine propelling this giant into the depths of the dark. The Supernova coming in at the fifth most expensive engine that you can purchase that you can access at level 57. Some of the other noteworthy addition to the Storm Rider Mark III is the Pinpoint 4G landing gear, giving a lander thruster 2 and a hull of 3. You also have some of the best cargo. You have the Carvel B103 cargo hold. And overall, this is just has to be one of the most supremely built ships in Starfield, which would make sense because of course the banks are going to be able to dish out and get some of the best components in all the universe. Looking at the weapons of the Storm Rider Mark III, Gull Bank did not skimp out on any expenses here. All weapons, Starship Design, Rank 4. Starting off with the Reza 300 Pulse Laser Turret. There's not one, but two. This is a top tier weapon. And if you add one more, you probably have max stats. Next, we got the Make 9A Auto Gauss Gun, which is the second most expensive ballistic weapon you can attach to your ship, which requires you to be level 57 to be able to purchase and attach. 
And to top it all off, we've got the 50k missile launcher, which at a value of 21,000 will sit at the fifth place for the most expensive missile launcher you can attach to your ship. And when you break it down and look at it like this, you can really see that the Storm Rider Mark III is absolute beast. Okay, so I'll just give you some rough levels to work with of when you should see the Storm Rider Mark I, II, or three. So the Storm Rider Mark I, or the OG Storm Rider, you'll see from the very get-go. You'll see it around all the major cities, so no issues getting this one. Mark II. Mark II of the Storm Riders does not appear in any of your technicians until level 54. So you're probably going to be seeing Storm Riders 2 slowly start to appear once you get to level 40, and you'll progressively see them more and more common as you level up. And once you get to 54, you should be seeing them much more regularly. Now the Storm Rider 3 doesn't appear in any of your technicians or purchasing until level 76, which gives us some indication that you might be able to find the Storm Rider 3 starting from a very rare occurrence at say level 50 and becoming more and more common once you get to level 76 and above. This is just a rough guide, nothing set in stone, but you will be looking to see the Storm Rider Mark III much more common once you start leveling up 70 plus. Okay, so to start us off, what are we going to need to be able to capture this brutal ship? We're going to need the Class C piloting license. We will also need the targeting control system rank one so we can lock and load and dock with this ship in space. I'm going to present to you two different methods on how to how to find, engage and dock a Storm Rider Mark 3. The second method I show you will be applicable to the Storm Rider Mark 1, 2 and 3. But this first method is only for the Storm Rider Mark 3. And for this method, there will be one more restriction. First method will require you to get to the Hawking system, which means you're going to need a grav drive that can jump at least between 23 to 25 light years. So keep that in mind as a very high activity around the planet to moon's orbits. When you're at a high enough level, jumping between the different planets and moons will eventually lead you to come across a Storm Rider Mark III by itself. That's why this method is really cool because you can actually get the Storm Rider Mark III absolutely free in the right condition and scenario. Now do note, you can find the Storm Rider Mark III in many different locations around the universe. But this method tends to work quite well in the Hawking system. So I suggest you start there. It's not the be all and all. There's plenty of other systems you will find it. I've been able to reproduce this in the Hawking system a couple of times. So I have a bit more certainty that this should work for more people. But again, it is a random event. So it's up to you how much time you want to put into this. But at least this is an excellent place to start. So the method of finding the Storm Rider Mark III is really simple. All we are doing is just jumping from moon, planet to moon, just jumping all over the place and just looking to generate that random event when the Storm Rider Mark III will be traveling by itself. Now, I don't think the difficulty will really matter at this stage. You can try this on very hard, very easy, depending how your ship's set up and what sort of difficulty you're looking to do this at. Keep in mind that the Storm Rider Mark III does pack a punch. However, do note that for me, when I spawned the Storm Rider Mark III, my difficulty was on very high reduced it to say very easy or normal just for the docking process. I suggest doing the same. If you're having any problems, just lower the difficulty, make it easier as it is a random generated event and it could be hard to get it again. So first things first. Okay, so for me, I've just been jumping around from moon to planet within the Hawking system, no order, just randomly blind. You'll run into all kinds of different things. You'll run into enemies, different enemy factions. You'll run into, I think, Freestar, even you you see ships, you'll run into pretty much everything, but the aim here is just to keep jumping and keep trying until you run into the Storm Raider Mark III. Lo and behold, lucky me, I found it. As soon as we've identified that we've run into a Storm Raider Mark III, we are going to save the game. It's very important to save the game just in case we stuff this up or we get annihilated or it doesn't go our way because the auto cannons kill it by chance or however it works out. We just want to make sure we have a saved game here. Okay, and before you engage, absolutely imperative that if you don't want to get a bounty, that you lock onto the ship first before firing. If you fire before locking onto the vessel, you will get a bounty. And then the bounties will stack every time you kill someone and you're gonna have a bad time, you have to pay a bounty. But if you don't care, yeah, go for it. And just keep in mind, lock on first. That way you won't get a bounty. Let me show you what I mean. So in this example, we locked on and we fired. We did not get that 650 bounty. And then if we compare it to the other way, where we don't lock on and we just start firing blindly at this ship, You'll notice that at the top right, you will see that 650 bounties added to us. And that will start the bounty count every time we kill a crew member after that. I think it keeps adding up. And that's what we're trying to avoid. Also, just keep in mind that if you have companions with you, particularly main 
quest companion. They're going to dob on you in all orbital encounters. So you'll always get a bounty. You can sometimes get bounties even if they're on your ship. So just make sure if you want to get no bounty, get your companions on an outpost or off your ship. And then this way you will get the Storm Rider absolutely free. Also do note that sometimes you may get stuck with the 650 bounty. That just means something didn't go exactly right for you, but it's a small price to pay. But then again, if you have companions, you're looking at a lot more. Now we're up to the docking part, but this is where I will actually change this difficulty to very hard. That's what I enjoy. And it also can increase your drop rate for legendaries in the rare occurrence that you get them on ships. The way I played this raid was that I was in mostly stealth, which makes it even easier not to rack up bounties. But again, no one else is around. So by the time you kill the last crew member, you should not get any bounty. And again, I have no crew members on my ship. No one to dob on me. I was using stealth for the most part, so I incurred no bounty. Might have looked like I got a bounty there, but I went straight back to the Tracker Alliance bounty clearance service and there was no bounty at all. And that is method one. Next, we're going to move on to the second and final method that will get you the mark one, two, or three of the Storm Rider, depending on your level. This method is applicable to any system that needs to have a contraband scan because you'll always find Storm Riders around major cities on planets. And this is rather a simple method. All we're trying to do is we're trying to use our scanner to find a storm rider follow them out to the edge of the system or as far out as we possibly can now that we've got them at the edge of the system or quite far out we can start attacking and the aim here is to do it quite quickly so we don't take too much damage from other ships in the area if they do decide to attack and that's one of the caveats to this this may take a few goes you might want to put this on very easy depending on where the storm rider is if it's very close to the planet then you'll get attacked quite a bit if it's further out, you won't have to worry because the ships have to travel to you and they won't start attacking you straight away. And don't worry, as soon as you dock with the Storm Rider, the attacks will stop and they won't attack you after taking the Storm Rider and go into another system to clear any bounties that you got. That's the other thing to note, you will get a bounty using this method more than likely because there are other ships around. And once you've cleared the ship, you can sit in the pilot seat, you can undock and you, have to, and you don't have to worry about anyone attacking you because no one seems to attack you after this. Sometimes though, they sometimes though your ship might go rogue and start attacking other ships. They do seem to prefer to target your old ship rather than your new ship. But the best thing to do is just to try to jump out of there as quick as possible. And you can see here, I only have a bounty of 300 of 1300, which isn't bad at all, considering that I've just taken this ship while in a very heavily populated area. So again, it's not much at all. Very, very cool. And now if you have any trouble spawning this, all you have to do is just travel between all the different planets and systems that have major cities keep doing that until you get a storm rider that you're after if you're a very if you're a high level you'll get storm rider one two and three and if you're lower level you'll probably only get the storm rider one or two so remember it is level dependent but that will actually get you a storm rider mark one two or three all right and also you can see right here you can see my ship getting attacked and going rogue <laughs> so pretty funny but uh, yeah, it does happen and I just jumped out of there. Didn't cause any issues. My ship was still there in my inventory after. Now we'll quickly check out the registration. If you want to register, this ship is roughly going to cost you 60,000 credits. And that's going to wrap it up. I know there was a lot of information in this one and it took a while, but thank you so much for watching. I hope you got something out of it. And if you did like it, please consider liking and subscribing. Thanks very much. Peace.